Some Marvel Cinematic Universe stars have put such a stamp on their characters that it's become almost impossible to separate the two. It's always kind of a shock to realize that other actors might have almost been cast in a role, like Jason Momoa, who auditioned for Drax before the role went to Dave Bautista. We had a chance to sit down with Charlie Wynn, former head of visual development at Marvel Studios, for an exclusive interview to discuss the evolution of Drax's cinematic design, how Jason Momoa almost joined the MCU, and how the character nearly ended up looking like a very famous video game character. When describing the original 1973 comic book design for Drax the Destroyer, you might use terms like simple, distinct, and extremely recognizable. You might also add the terms unbearably ridiculous and monumentally goofy to that list. The 70s were a different time, man. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. <laughs> Overall, Drax's outfit when he first appeared in Iron Man number 55 is unforgettable, and also impossible to put on the big screen without causing the audience to barf into their popcorn. Naturally, Wynn and his team at Marvel Studios never got anywhere close to these looks when they began adapting Drax for the screen. Before becoming the head of visual development at Marvel Studios, Charlie Wynn also designed Kratos, the murderous hero from the God of War video game franchise for Sony. The game first debuted in March 2005 after a few years of development. Meanwhile, later that year, Marvel Comics happened to release a Drax the Destroyer miniseries with a brand new design for the character. Gone were the goofy purple tights and skull accessories. Instead, Drax ditched the shirt and got some ink. While the design was new to Drax, it definitely had more than a few similarities with Wynn's final Kratos design, something he'd discovered when someone sent the company a Drax comic book. The funny part with Drax is that he, when I was working on, on God of War back in the day, somebody has sent me, uh, or sent Sony, a Drax comic book. And, and the thing is, we're like, oh wow, that looks a lot like Kratos. <laughs> and, was, and I remember that, and I remember the Sony, we were like, oh man, well, what, what should we do about this? You know, they can't make it look, <laughs> it looks so much like Kratos. So it came as a surprise when, just a few years later, Wynn led the design department at Marvel Studios and found himself face to face with the challenge of having to adapt the cosmic hero who already resembled a character he'd designed before. And then fast forward, you know, um, I'm like, oh, this is that character. I didn't realize that. And then so I'm like, okay, how am I going to make this character not look like the character I designed for God of War? As Wynn led his team through designs for Guardians of the Galaxy, the film's casting directors hunted for the right actors. One up-and-comer named Jason Momoa, who'd found success with his portrayal of Khal Drogo in HBO's Game of Thrones, became a frontrunner to win the part of Drax. So Jason Momoa um, like sent in this amazing screen test. And of course, like he already knew how to, to do those fighting positions. He looked very convincing. Wynn created art depicting the actor in the role, featuring Momoa's face on a lean-looking Drax the Destroyer that's a clear step away from the Kratos-looking comics and much closer to the final cinematic design. As it turned out, however, while Momoa had the look and the moves to play Drax, he wasn't quite right for the part, at least not when compared with another actor vying for the role, wrestler Dave Bautista. In a way, it's like it didn't push that character the way that Bautista did. That was the worst pet talk ever. Uh, I think with Momoa in it, it felt like the Game of Thrones character uh, that he played. He, he has a great face for it, right? I mean, so we, we did some takes with Momoa as the character, as Drax, but um, ultimately I think Batista really took that role. And from that point on, we designed it specifically for him. Momoa himself seemed to agree that his casting wouldn't bring much that was new to the screen, revealing why he ultimately turned down the role in a 2014 interview. I want my children to see their father happy. It's not that it's not a good role, it just wasn't the right thing. I was on Stargate Atlantis for four years playing a similar character called Ronan, who was an alien who didn't say much and grunted. I've been there and done that whether people have seen it or not. You want to stretch. Of course, no one could know back in 2014 that Momoa would go on to headline his very own superhero movie a few years later with 2018's Aquaman, one of the tentpole films of the DC Extended Universe, but that's another story. So Momoa was out and Batista was in, and both Wynn and Marvel movie fans would agree that the right man was cast in the part. You know, Batista brought this sort of like a, a different side to it that nobody was expecting. A little funny, but sort of naturally funny, just just it was like, wow, this is a whole character. He's bringing something to that character. I've mastered the ability 
of standing so incredibly still that I've become invisible to the eye. Watch. From that point on, we designed it specifically for him, even the way his head is shaped. If you take a look at one of the first pieces of concept art Kevin Feige unveiled to announce Guardians of the Galaxy, which was painted by Charlie Wynn, you can definitely see the influence of Batista himself on the character's design. Meanwhile, to further evolve Drax's cinematic look, Wynn continued pushing the design away from the clean lines of the mid-2000s Drax, the one that had looked so much like Kratos. Instead, he focused on making Drax's tattoos an integral part of the adapted character's internal life. All the tattoos that were on him is really telling about his story. His life is basically on his body, and so it's very complex. Not something that you would ever do for maybe um, a comic book or a video game, because it's just, it's, it's harder to read as an instant read, but we definitely put more into his story with just his look, as well as pulled it away from, from Kratos. It's easy to see in this image that also features early versions of the other Guardians that the tattoos are beginning to feature even more prominently in Drax's design and his intimidation factor. Character trait-wise, he's not the most intelligent character in the world. <laughs> I have famously huge turds. But he's, I think it's like he's surprisingly loyal but he's got his own sense of honor, you know, brutal honor that he lives by, right? His own brutal code. Drax is just, everybody's afraid of him. He, he's somebody that even people in prison are afraid of, right? Um, and this is like a intergalactic prison where you have all these huge characters that would, I don't know, just looks really scary and monstrous. But Drax is somebody that can definitely hold his own to any of them check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more exclusive Looper videos with Charlie Wynn about the creation of the Marvel Cinematic Universe are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.